Gary Mosevich said, yes, please, line them up side by side so the Jet Dragsters here at the Quint Motorplex promises to be a big show. Chuck's very impressed with Gary's driving and also very, very impressed with this facility. I have to be totally honest with you. It's one of the most beautiful tracks that I've ever raced on, bar none. And that's including some of the big tracks in the United States. This track is very nice, very smooth, and it's got a beautiful shutdown area where it actually heads uphill a little bit and helps in the braking area. For those people who don't know, you've actually got quite a bit of drag racing experience behind you, don't you? Yes, I raced uh, dragsters, uh, supercharged dragsters, funny cars, a couple of those. And then I moved into the Thunder Down Under jet truck, uh, which I put in a museum about uh, seven odd years ago. And so when this opportunity came up, I just couldn't wait. You had a pretty uh, tough test to actually be able to get in the car for tonight, didn't you? Uh, yes, all the controls are designed for a midget, or actually for Chuck Haynes, who we call a midget because he's pretty short. But um, uh, we just shifted all the brake pedals forward and uh, all the hand controls forward. We just did all the adjustments you need to do so that a guy my size can fit in. Both jet cars sounding very, very strong in the start-up. Volcano first on the flame prank. Yes, and Gary Myosevich, I must say, Stewie Bond looking very relaxed in Gravity Storm. You would think after not racing for some while, there'd be a little bit of nerve, but he looked very relaxed behind the wheel. Working the controls in the jet car, very different to the jet truck. Everything's a lot sharper and a lot faster. He can cycle the afterburner a lot quicker. Now, they're going to hold these cars on the start line at about 70, 80, maybe even 90% thrust. And then if they think there's enough traction, if they've got enough hold on the brakes, they will wind them to 100% and then bang the afterburner on the green light. Now, Chuck's chasing a 500 kilometer an hour pass. Gary Mjozovic is chasing the win. Gravity storm slightly slower. He gets a better start. Chuck needs to get him now, and can he catch him? He does. Catches him right on the finish line. Chuck misses the big speed, 483, but gets the win with a 515. Good pass. Well, inside the office with Gary Mjozovic, he's on his way down the corner, Bondi. Mate, watching the finish line here, he needs to coordinate the uh, fuel switch and the chute. Does a beautiful job in the braking area. That is a great run. We were real happy to be able to run 300 on the first lap, but you know, we feel the car's got a lot more in it, so we're going to do some tune-up on it. The air is going to get a little colder tonight. Hopefully we can come back and uh, put a good number down for you. As quick as Gravity Storm is, how quick's Volcano? You know, I couldn't believe that. I cut a 0.47 light. It was a great light, and I thought I got, I got him nailed on this one, and I get down about three-quarter track. Next minute, he just zoomed past. I'm thinking, I got it, I got it, I got it, and then I was gone. Well, Gary telling us how important it is to hit the start line hard when you know the guy in the other lane's got quite a few tenths of a second on you. He's chasing this tree very, very hard. A high point four reaction time against Chuck Haynes with a point eight. So Chucky's happy to sit on the start line to build the boost. Get the thrust right up and look at the flame from his jet. Certainly turning on the power now. Chuck Haynes with one win. Gary Mersovich out this time, trying to pick up his win. The RPM on the engine's coming up. Have a look at the gauges. And they're working very, very hard in that small cockpit. And the secret of these cars is a lot of boost and very, very little weight. Start to bring the cars forward now. Won't be long before they're locked away. The volcano and gravity storm side by side here at the Quint Motorplex. Chucky Haynes and Gary Mayosevich. Can Chuck be the first racer outside the USA to run 500 kilometers an hour? Can hear the uh, thrust building up. They're taking another step up. Mjozovic once again gets the lead, but it's a red line. Almost impossible. A point three on a free tree, and Chuck nails him on the finish line. 512 k's. It's a 502. Gary fighting all the way down the track. I'm sure he hasn't seen it, and he sees the jet car pass him. What's it like to be part of the fastest pass possibly in history? Well, that was absolutely unbelievable. I thought that uh, I knew I drew a good line, and. Uh, a point three nine four light on a pro tree is uh, pretty sharp, uh, but to have him still pass me uh, just before the trap and at the rate he passed me, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I just, just, uh, just, I thought he might come past you know, a little bit quicker than me, but that's not his blue pass. Chuck, what an amazing <laughs> run! <laughs> what a laugh! Well, boy, I couldn't be happier. You know, to do that here in Australia, this is my favorite place to be, favorite track. Uh, people don't realize, you know, the car is great, but it takes a good racetrack to do that, and we got it both. We had a great car, 
We're, we're still hoping to get in the fours, but what a lap. That's a career best for me. I couldn't be happier. My hats are off to all the people at the Motorplex in this wonderful city of, of Western Australia. I mean, I, I got to tell you, this morning I got up, I went for a walk down by the Swan River, and I had to pinch myself because it was. I'm so fortunate to be able to do this, you know, to, to, to be able to make a living and to come out into this what great country and, and the sunshine and the warm world. I mean, it's great. It's, life is good. <laughs> oh, is Chucky on a high or what? Now, you <laughs> never guess that it's two, 12 and a half feet of snow in Montana right now, and Chuck is happy to be in first. Now, he did elude to one more goal. Can he run the first Jet 4 outside the USA? He missed it by two one-hundredths of a second last time out, and it looks like he's got the big burner on. Well, certainly lots of flames in the back of the uh, Volcano car. So too with Majovic. Majovic has turned up the wick a little bit more. He's anxious to pick up a win this round. Both cars need to hit the start line very, very hard. Gary now realises he's losing six cents on every race to Chuck. He needs a really good light, but no more red lights. And Chucky needs to hit the afterburner at about 110% on the start line. He needs to overwind that engine. We'll watch him on the tree. They're about to be launched off the line. Mercedes Jack quick oh. with a good reaction time. Chucky's on the chase, but Gary looks like he's on a good number. And he picks up the win. A 578 at 443 kilometers an hour. Well, Haynes with a uh, stutter on the start line. We go down the track with Miozovic. The concentration in his eye. Chucky's hit the afterburner. It stalled and then come back on again. That may have cost him a 503. It's cost him a four. A stutter on the line. Watch the car. Bangs the afterburner twice. And that could be the thing that stops him from being the first four outside the US. Chuck, another impressive run. Oh, thank you very much. It was a career best for me. 319. Hey, that's great. I was uh, really hoping they hit the fours. We tried. The weather didn't quite cooperate with us. Didn't get quite cold enough. But, you know, the good news is it's a great excuse for me to come back and try it again here. Gary, what a run, and you get the week. Well, yeah, I had to get one out of three, but uh, it was a great run. I knew it was quicker. I knew it was faster, but I couldn't find out what it was down the other end. It was a 578. You know, I wasn't supposed to be competitive, but I had to practice in my action times before this event and talking to the guys about turning the fuel up and hoping the air's coming down and revving it up. And that time we managed to rev it up so hard on the start line, it was a full wide open throttle, which is actually 109%, and 100% is about where you normally can get it to on the start line. So I just had both brakes on, just hoped it didn't slide, and just wound it right up. Do you consider coming out of retirement? Uh, who put you up to that? <laughs> Um, I'd, I love this stuff. I love this stuff. And that's why I'm involved in drag racing. That's why I'm involved with the motorplex. That's why we all work so hard on it. I love this stuff.